it's time for another foundation document. In AP government, we have nine different foundation documents, and you're expected to know these, understand them well enough, maybe answer multiple choice questions, but mostly if you get a argumentative essay question, which I mean, you will get an argumentative question. I should say when you get an argumentative question on the AP test, you are expected to use these documents in your argument. So it's really, um, really key that you understand them. So this article, um, I mean, this uh, foundational document is the Articles of Confederation. These were adopted in 1781 as the first government of the United States of America. And it's you need to understand why these are not great and why it leads to the Constitutional Convention of 1787. Now, remember, these are formed right at the end of the, of the revolution. And they were – the biggest concern they had when they were creating them is the power of the executive. They had just come – under from out from under the power of a tyrannical king george and they were worried about the power of executive so they didn't want a central government that was strong and so the articles confederation are what comes out of that all right you're going to have this document you are either have it a, a uh either have a hard copy of it and you're going to highlight and make some notes or you're going to create a google doc um and go ahead and and make a and, and do the same notations that i'm doing all right so let's get through this really quickly all right so first off uh article one is just an introduction um article two here says uh, from the articles of confederation uh says that each state shall retain its sovereignty freedom and independence so let me just first off make sure you understand sovereignty means power and so when it says that each state is going to retain its sovereignty freedom and independence that means that it's we're really talking here about more of a confederation system than we are talking about really a united government. I mean, each state is almost really an independent country, as we'll see. And every power, jurisdiction, and right, which is not by this confederation, you can see it says confederation right there, expressly delegated the United States Congress in United States in Congress assembled. Notice that the country of the United States is only the United States in Congress assembled. So it tells you how much um you know how little power the central government of quote unquote the united states in congress assembled will have article three says uh the states hereby severally shall enter into a firm league of friendship with each other this is always like the part people like smile about um i love this a firm league of friendship so this is not you know a a united country um, by any stretch, but a firm league of friendship. I mean, it's not exactly like a ringing endorsement of unity. Um, so just keep that in mind. This is very, very, um, you know, very, very light in terms of unity with each other for their common defense, security of their liberties, and their mutual and general welfare. This is really the key point here, um, is that they want to make sure that they each remain free and defense against foreign invasion is the big issue here, all right? Defense against foreign invasion, that's the real key reason for this. Because if the states don't have some sort of unity, then it's very likely that European powers are gonna pick them off. You know, Georgia's gonna be taken over by maybe Spain and, and you know, Massachusetts and Vermont and New Hampshire might be grabbed back by Britain. These things can happen. So therefore, they've gotta have some sort of common defense security of their liberties and their mutual and general welfare, welfare binding themselves to assist each other against all force offered to or attacks made upon them or any of them on account of religion, sovereignty, trade, or any pretense whatsoever. So this is really just saying like we are in a compact. Basically, we're like a defensive compact. This is like really the Articles of Confederation are almost more like NATO than it really is the U.S. Constitution. This is almost more like a NATO kind of, hey, we're united against the communists. In this case, uh, we're united against foreigners taking us over, meaning European nations. Article 4, the free inhabitants of each state shall be entitled to all privileges and immunities of free citizens in several states. Basically what that means is that if you have freedom, some freedom or right, and somebody moves in there from another state, you can't like deny them that right. So this uh, this does is a little bit more than NATO, but basically it allows people to move freely from one state to another and enjoy the rights. Okay, so enjoy rights as you travel or move to another state. Um, now we're kind of moving past like just the NATO compact and a, maybe a little bit more like the European Union. That's kind of a little bit more. 
Um, determine in Article Five in determining questions the United States and Congress assembled each state job one vote. This is going to be really key because um, this is going to make it very difficult to get much passed. Each state one vote. That's really a critical um, issue. Um, population doesn't matter. And that's really the issue here is that the large states like New York at the time or for Virginia was the, one of the largest states, um, they're not going to have any more sway than Rhode Island or Connecticut, which are tiny. Article uh, in a freedom of speech and debate in Congress shall not be impeached or questioned in any court or place out of Congress. Now, notice freedom of speech is not freedom of speech for citizens. It's freedom of speech in Congress. So that's a little bit different. Freedom of speech, and I'm going to put equal, in Congress. That's where you're guaranteed. And so you can't do that. But it doesn't say that freedom of speech couldn't be limited, say, in Rhode Island or some other place. But it's only freedom of speech protected in Congress. So we don't have as quite a wide-spanning rights um, as, as we will under the Constitution. Article 6, but every state shall always keep up a well-regulated disciplined militia, sufficiently armed and uh, accoutred. Um, no state shall engage in any war without consent of the United States and Congress. So there's some limit on here. So uh, power, um, war power, that's um, of the central government. So the power to go to war is is reserved to the central government. So there is one power that's being taken from the uh, states here, um, the power to make war. That's a central government power. And it's one of the only powers really that Congress has. Um, Article 8, all charges of war and all expenses that shall be accrued for the common defense or general welfare shall be defrayed out of the common treasury, which shall be supplied by the several states in proportion to the value of all land within each state. The taxes for paying that proportion shall be laid and levied by the authority and direction of the legislatures of several states. This is really key. So sh shall be defrayed out of the common treasury, okay, the United States treasury, but it shall be supplied by the several states. Okay, so taxes can't be collected, okay? Taxes are supplied by the states uh congress can't collect taxes congress cannot collect taxes it only tax that can be raised are from the direction of the legislatures of the several states so this makes the congress of the united states very very weak because what's going to happen is they're going to ask for taxes for certain things and basically the states can be like Maybe not, and they won't send it, and that's going to be a problem, especially when we see Shays' Rebellion in uh, 1786. Article uh, 9, the United States in Congress assembled shall have the sole and exclusive right uh, and power of determining peace and war. Okay, we already kind of did, talked about that. Basically, foreign, foreign affairs is the only thing that this government really has much power over. Entering into treaties and alliances, the U.S. in Congress, the United States in Congress assembled. You know, it, says, it keeps saying that it's never the United States. It's the United States in Congress assembled. And, and when it's not Congress assembled, you're from Virginia. And when it's not Congress assembled, you're from Massachusetts. All right. Um uh, it shall never engage in war, nor enter into treaties and alliance, nor coin money, nor regulate the value thereof, nor borrow money on the credit of the United States, nor appropriate money, nor agree upon the number of vessels of war to be built or purchased, or the number of land or sea forces raised, nor appoint a commander-in-chief of the Army and Navy, unless nine states assent to the same. So basically, for anything to get done, nine states must agree to get anything done. Let me scroll up here so you got all that. Uh, this is basically, uh, by the way, that's basically a super majority. A simple majority would be seven um, states, seven uh, in, to six would be a simple majority. But this is a, a nine out of six, 13 is a super majority. It's over 60%. So it's going to make it difficult to get things done. You're going to have to have a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, something really serious for, for states to do anything. The United States Assembly shall be a last resort in all appeals, uh, in disputes and differences. So last resort. On appeal means like a court, all right? So uh, last appeal equals Congress is last court. Now, that means that there's no national 
court system. There's no Supreme Court. So Congress ends up being the last resort on appeal of all disputes and differences. That's also going to be a major weakness of the Confederation. And thereafter, uh, that the hereafter may arise between two or more states concerning boundaries, jurisdiction, or any other cause whatsoever. Now, of course, that would be decided by the Supreme Court. So, um, all right, that's the Articles of Confederation. We're going we're gonna to list here uh, required foundation document number two. So, so either print this chart out or maybe I gave it to you already, um, but you're going to print this out and we're going to go through this on a separate lesson real quick. All right, guys, great job. Articles of Confederation, big issues, big problems. All right, see you then.